On March 17, 1776, George Washington stood on the crest of Dorchester Heights, just south of Boston. His army, now armed with a battery of 59 cannon, all positioned to fire upon strategic targets, including Boston Harbor. He watches intently as the British army calmly moves out of Boston after an 11th month siege. The siege of Boston began in April of 1775, during the opening stages of the American Revolution. American militia made several attempts to regain control of the British-held Boston, hoping to regain control of the important port city. Fighting remained in a stalemate for months until a young army officer named Henry Knox suggested that only the destructive force of cannon would drive the British forces out of Boston. A former bookseller, Henry Knox was self-educated in military strategy and tactics, and quickly became one of Washington's most valuable men through meritocracy. In November 1775, Washington sent Knox to retrieve as many cannon as possible at the recently captured Fort Ticonderoga in northern New York and bring them to Boston. This would be a grueling journey, especially as winter was approaching. Knox recognized the challenge before him. As he wrote to Washington on December 5, 1775, quote, The garrison at Ticonderoga is so weak. The conveyance from the fort to the landing is so difficult. The passage across the lake so precarious that I am afraid it will be ten days at least before I can get them on this side. When they are here, the conveyance from hence will depend entirely on the sledding. If that is wood, they shall immediately move forward. Without sledding, the roads are so much gullied that it will be impossible to move a step." Close quote. Isaac Makos of Battlefield.org states, Henry Knox left for Fort Ticonderoga on November 16, 1775. Once he arrived at the fort, he selected 58 pieces of artillery to take back to Boston. Most of the artillery pieces were 12-pounder or 18-pounder cannons depending on the weight of the cannonball they fired. Knox also brought one massive 24-pounder cannon nicknamed Old Sow that weighed more than 5,000 pounds and several high-arching mortar guns that weighed 2,000 pounds each. In total, Henry Knox's noble train of artillery weighed 120,000 pounds or 60 tons. Once the artillery was acquired, Knox and his men began returning to Boston. After constructing barges suitable for the size and weight of their powerful treasure, they first set sail on Lake George. After their eight-day journey on the partially frozen lake, they began to travel on land. They had to use many horses, oxen, and purpose-built sleds to transport the enormous cannons across the wintry terrain. The journey on land required crossing the frozen Hudson River four times. David McCullough, in his book, 1776, writes, Nearly a dozen sleds had crossed without mishap until suddenly one of the largest cannons, an 18-pounder, broke through and sank not far from shore, leaving a hole in the ice 14 feet in diameter. Undaunted, Knox at once set about retrieving the cannon from the bottom of the river, losing a full day in effort, but at last succeeding. As he wrote, quote, owing to the assistance of the good people of Albany, close quote. Knox and his men moved the artillery 300 miles in 56 days. In a letter written to Washington as he made the return journey, he wrote, quote, It is not easy to conceive the difficulties we have had. Close quote. Miraculously, not a single cannon was lost. Henry Knox and his men arrived at the Continental Army Camp in late January 1776. On the night of March 4th, the cannons were quietly moved into position on Dorchester Heights overlooking the city and the harbor. With the use of the artillery acquired by Knox, the Continental Army took aim at the valuable British ships in the Boston Harbor. On March 17, 1776, the British forces finally evacuated Boston. As the Massachusetts Historical Society noted, Major General Henry Knox's formidable artillery regiment continued to exhibit skill, precision, and valor through all the major battles of the North. After the Revolution, Knox was appointed first Secretary of War under the Constitution, drew up plans for the Military Academy at West Point, and was founder of the Society of the Cincinnati. Knox's brilliant military career ended abruptly in 1806, when he died at the age of 56 in Maine at his mansion, Montpelier.
Thanks to the indomitable Henry Knox and the artillery he acquired at Fort Ticonderoga, the British forces were finally compelled to evacuate the city of Boston, giving those in the New World hope that the American experiment would live on.